Yeah, got it. Got it. All right. So I will read our thing here. Welcome, everybody, to this weekly non duality Zoom with Don Garland and me. Thank you for coming. Hello, Andy. Welcome. Th thank, thank you for being here. And anybody that's on YouTube. Please keep your microphones muted until invited to speak. This is being shared live on YouTube. So by asking a question, you are giving consent. We encourage you to raise your hand virtually after the brief introductions by unmuting yourself and turning on your camera. Alternatively, you can write your questions in the chat on YouTube or in the Zoom. This is for entertainment purposes only. And that's about it. So with that, I wonder if Don could give us a introduction, please. Um, so non-duality is the end of seeking, uh, is the end of looking for something to complete the self. Um, it's the end of the sense of lack. It's the end of looking to externals to to fill up the void inside or whatever that's the experience it's coming home to oneself and it's the end of all identity as it was known so the historical self the personal history is seen um not to define who we are um in fact that dissolves and with it, because what is that self? It's it's time, it's the past it and it's the future. It's the identity with the body and mind. It's so this boundary, apparent boundary dissolves and all there is, is what is. So, um, so this is beyond the mind, beyond understanding. And the essence of it is love, which includes everything and which redeems everything. It redeems the past, it fulfills, it's beyond fulfillment. Um, and it is a radical acceptance of everything as it is and it's a kind of renewal as well. It's a rejuvenation. It's seeing things as they are, seeing clearly, seeing for the first time. It's seeing moment to moment to moment the beauty and what is, what was actually run away from is now what's come back home to. Um, so there is a constant, very often a running away from just the stillness, you know, just and an inability just to sit with the self will actually there's nothing more pleasurable than just being so there's this just a rest resting it's coming to rest and actually that's the most beautiful thing is everything just as it is and so in a way there's a kind of leveling out there's no one who's special and no one who's not special. There's no, um, nothing to be sought for because this moment is complete. It's, um, it's already rich. And so the sense of authority goes, the, the ideals collapse. Um, there's just simple relating, um, you know, so, which is essentially relating to, um, to the self. It's not because the, because the boundary line has gone, it's just, it's just very natural. So it's everything's in a kind of presence is in the foreground and whatever we, we take as ego, the, the identity, the personality is, is in the background really, in a sense, that's a kind of 
way of putting it. I know it's not that either, but um, so time can be accessed and life life goes on, but for no one. So it's a kind of death of the self. It's a beautiful death, but the ego isn't destroyed in that. It's not that, it's just, it's not lived. Life is not lived from the ego and life is not lived. There's no one living life. Life is just happening. So it's just an emptying out. And it's intensely personal, intensely impersonal. And at the same time, so it's neither one. Um, and I think that's probably all I'm going to say right now. And I'm not recording this. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh. Do you want to do you want to record? Yeah, might as well. Okay. 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 Sorry about that. Seem to always forget that. Um, where are you, Don? There you are. Allow. All right. There we go. All right. And now you missed your whole intro. All right. It's fantastic. I like missing intro. <laughs> Um, well, I guess that's my turn to say something about non-duality. So, you know, <clears throat> there's something that's seen, and this isn't about the words. It's not about constantly correcting the, the language and saying apparently or you know, seen by no one and all this stuff. It's just was seen that there was no one here. There's no autonomous individual separate entity running its life. That life seems to be living itself. And it's just one big beautiful happening to no one by no one. And Whatever arises is this unspeakable, beautiful, unconditional, boundless mystery. And that could, or it could show up as anything. It could appear as anything. This is no thing appearing as everything. And there are no separate things. It's... Um, just seeing that this body, all the other apparent bodies, all the other apparent things are arising from the same mystery. I call it a mystery because there's no knowing, there's no understanding of what this is because it isn't a thing. We call it this call it mystery we call it unconditional love some people call it awareness consciousness but it's none of those things you know the, they say the map is not the territory um so it's undescribable and it's ineffable but energy sometimes people will say Boundless energy. Um, it's amazing because at one point I just felt like a separate individual navigating my way through life and just felt separate apart from. And now there's, there's just it was seen that this was always the case and that all that contraction and separation was an illusion to begin with. It just never was. So the message really is <clears throat> there's no place to get to. That there's no one to get to anywhere. That this is always already all there is, is this boundless freedom, unconditional love. Um, and it's important because I know so many people out there are so attached to the words 
and the concepts. And that's not it. It's not it. It's not an intellectual understanding. It's not even an experience. It's just what is or what seems to be. Um, we have beliefs, concepts, ideas, perceptions, projections, and that becomes our world of experience. We experience our own beliefs. We experience our own projections. We experience our own concepts. If you hold something to be true and real and solid, then that's your reality. But I guess the possibility that's being explored is that all that could fall away. The rug could be pulled out from underneath you into this free fall where there's nothing to hold on to, there's nothing to grasp. It's just this beautiful mystery appearing as everything. And it's, um, it inspires such wonder and awe to just look around and be amazed. Be amazed at what seems to be. And, <clears throat> you know, somebody was, uh, seemed to be uh, yelling at me to stop up speaking in cliches and then talk about my own experience. And, you know, my experiences, oh, I got people waiting. Sorry, that's what happens when you talk with your eyes closed. Um, the experience is that all that fell away. And there was an awakening to that there is no individual anywhere. There is no, there are no people. It's that all these bodies are almost operating on this programming and conditioning and enculturation and indoctrination. And these words are coming out, but they're not my words. Where would I get them? Where would I find them? They're just, it's just pouring out of me. The same with emotions and anything that is expressed. It's, it's not mine. If I experience bliss, it's not my bliss. How could I create bliss? I am not the creator. I am not the destroyer. I'm not the preserver. I'm not the meditator. I'm not anything. It's just what's happening. It's just what's appearing to come out of this body, mind, organism, whatever you want to say. Um, I don't have a thought. I don't have a feeling. There's no ownership of that. So to speak of my experience, I don't have an experience to talk about. All I have is what whatever is pouring out of my mouth right now. What, <laughs> you know, um, anyway, I think that's about it for me. Uh, we do have some comments in the chat. So feel free to comment in the chat or you can raise your hand virtually and we will call on you in the Zoom. So, Daryl says, it was seen by whom? This is exactly what I'm talking about. If you're focused on always saying, well, who did that? Then you're missing the point. You can't see the forest through the trees, so to speak. Um, it just is. It just is. It's the same 
no, let's just say, the seeing of this is the same as anything else. It, it's the same as me drinking this or me talking or, or, you know, it's all just what seems to be happening. And that seeing was also just, it, it's also not special. It's also no different than tying your shoes or having breakfast. It was just another, you know, everyone li likes to say it's all a story. It's all a story. Great. Some, but some stories feel more blissful and beautiful than others. You know, and I, I don't feel the need to constantly say by no one. It, it's experienced here. Life seems to be experienced here. You know, it, it's like uh, awareness, being aware of awareness or, or life living itself or um, the way I see it is like, this one beautiful expression expressing itself in all these different forms, being all these different forms with their own apparent individual experiences of life. And that was mine. Oh, oh Zoom link. They're looking for the Zoom link. Um, so that was a part of my story, but it's still all a story because there's no falling away of a separate self because there never was one. So that also is another story. So what I'm pointing to is it, this unbroken whole was never broken. It never needed to be fixed. You never needed to be fixed. Nothing ever happened. Um, but in the story of this character, there was an awakening. There was a scene. But to focus on, well, who did that is to get caught up in semantics. And, you know, it's not an intellectual understanding. It's not about getting the words right. This, this beingness doesn't give a fuck about the words. This beingness doesn't give a fuck about this character. It just is. It's just self-shining. It's just on. And there's no separation in that. There is no who. You know, to, to whom do these thoughts arise? They don't they arise to no one. They, they just arise. Anyway, any thoughts on that, Don? I think you've answered it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it happens for no one. And that's a short answer, isn't it? The, the stock answer. But, but yeah, so in a sense, it happens to Don, but if you're talking about me, but Don is no one and just as you know, this, there's no one there, there's no one here. So it's, you know, whatever is said about this is mystifying and yet it's very simple and it's recognition and it's in living this, it's just very simple. So, yeah. Oh, that was very short. All right, okay. <laughs> I, I just <laughs> muted myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we are open for questions and comments, please. Feel free to jump right in. Maybe they're afraid I'm going to attack them if they. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Daryl. I love you, buddy. <laughs> I really, he's a great guy. Yeah. 
Oh. Betty said she really liked your intro. Oh, did she? Yeah. Where's Betty then? Betty's. She's swimming. Both swimming somewhere. I'll share the Zoom link in there. Give me one second. Talk so much just. All right, Zoom link has been shared in the on YouTube if anyone wants to uh, come in. Robbie says, lovely spending time with you two. Naomi says, warm wishes to all. Great to be able to join Walter and Dawn in the space. Oh, here comes Betty. Okay. I don't know how to pin it. Oh, Danny's coming in. Hi. Hi, Betty. <laughs> Hi. Dawn, I really like the intro. Don't ask me what you said because I don't remember anything that happened two minutes ago, but it was beautiful. It really All right, was. okay. Try to <laughs> replicate it next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I have no idea what I said either. That makes it was so best. good. It was so peaceful. It was very peaceful. Oh, yeah. is that how you feel? Are you feeling peaceful? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's more about it. When you've disappeared, Danny's come on. Well, I ha I'll have the intro on my channel anyway. If so it's, it's oh you can have dawn's intro i'll have it yeah oh okay oh i thought you meant you didn't get it either well, oh, she re she there. records it for her channel and but i just go live so everything is on there oh okay mm -hmm. good oh so i will hear it again wow yes it was great uh, betty is like a breath of fresh air says robbie uh But, you know, you I'll, since Sorry. nobody's talking, I'll, I'll say, can you hear me okay? Because I'm in the car. Yeah, oh, good. I can hear you good, yeah. Okay. So I heard um, a speaker, you know, yeah, he was talking. But one thing that I remembered, he said, um, it's impossible for the illusion to ever be fulfilled. You know, and... Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, you know, the whole life is seeking, <laughs> you know, even to do a meditation, it's seeking for the peace, it's seeking for the quiet to do buy a bottle of wine, it's seeking from the escape from, you know, you know, from the daily life, you know, um, trying to pick out where you're going to go on vacation, another seeking an escape, you know, it, it's the, it, it, you know, the entire freaking day and life is total seeking. I just realized it. And I just, it's, it's like, it's an impossibility. <laughs> because I've been lurking for all 70 years to get fucking fulfilled. No wonder why it never happened. <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> oh my god anyway yeah but at the same time there's that you know you'll still i mean you you want some i mean it's not like after awakening you're not want something from a bottle of wine right or a holiday destination or but it's different i suppose it's 
yeah you know it's subtly different as well like it's you know but decisions but still I'm have looking, to be made. I'm looking for something you see it's, it feels like you're looking for there's a me here that's looking still yeah yeah, yeah. it's you know yeah, and not being told to stop or drop the meditation or I mean none of that helps right I mean it's no. It's no, just because you have to do something, you know. Nothing helps. No, nothing helps. So, you know, I always say, I goddamn wish I never heard the message. And I never had <laughs> the proof. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like um, somebody else said, I think the same speaker that same day said, um, it's unbelievable until it's undeniable. And I think that's kind of what happened, you know, like I, I was came, you know, I didn't come because I wasn't there. You know, you get smacked in the face. I guess that happened to you and it sounds like to Walter from what I recall. And you just can't go back. Can't well, there's go no back. Way to go back to, is there? I mean, unless there's a glimpse, in which case it seems like it you know has reverted back but I mean because the past is also in this as well and it's it's a game changer isn't it so total game changer it's a total game changer if I hadn't that hadn't uh, you know occurred you know I would have still been having a strong faith and belief in you know God or something there's there's nothing there's absolutely nothing there's nothing <laughs> So how do you know that? I mean, you, you say that, like, is that from your experience of the, the glimpse you say that, or is that from listening to like non-duality speak? Well, because... it's probably, it's, it's, well, you know, it's, it's, I guess, a conglomeration of everything, but, you know, no, I, I mean, this is the mystery of any spirituality, you know, you know, I think I listened a little bit to who Walter had on this morning, just a little bit, because I had things I had to do, and, um, you know, that that seems like kind of a comforting. Yeah, there's it's, you know, the formless becoming form. But, you know, is there some kind of like I, and I think even I get an inclination from Walter sometimes like, um, you know, <laughs> this beautiful uh, eight billion beautiful creatures. But there's somewhere something that, uh, you know, there was somehow. A, not a creation, like in a creation in, in a way, almost. And I, you know, I, I don't know, Walter, maybe he wants to explain it again, what he was saying, but it's like, I don't, I, I don't think there's anything. Maybe there's a big AI up there. I have no idea anymore what's, what it is. I just know that there's nobody here and the scientists have told us the same thing. There's nobody here. We got disconnected. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what? Oh, no, you're still there, Betty. <laughs> Did you hear anything I said? I was ranting for about 10 minutes. And it looked well, like I, the thing froze. The uh, well, Wi-Fi. I, heard, I got all of it, yeah. Oh, you did? Oh. <laughs> I mean, the message yeah. is just the, the no thing of uh, being everything. So it doesn't matter what you call that no thing. Some people like God, you know, so you can say God being Betty, God appearing as Betty. It could be a praying mantis. <laughs> you know, really, it's a mystery. It could be a praying mantis. I love praying mantis. They're so beautiful. I mean, just, you know, it's just. But I change the words all the time just so, uh, you know, nobody gets attached to any of them because, it, you know, I can't possibly get it, nail it, like use the right concept to frame what no thing is. Nobody can. So it doesn't matter. You know, let's call it whatever you want. 
Yeah. It's the swans <laughs> bobbing across the bay right now. I don't know. I mean, it's just, it, it's so, it was so much more, um, uh, for this, per, for me, it was, it you know, to, to have a faith, to have a God, to have, <laughs> you know, I got to do, you know, 40 hours of, you know, meditation, whatever. It was, it was easier to have to throw everything away now, the baby and the bath water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Andy has his hand raised. If we could go to Andy. Yeah. Hi. Mm. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Um. So what I'm just thinking about is, you know, when you're going through life, minding your own business and things are going sweet, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, something gets dumped on you, and you think, "What the fuck's that? Where's that come from? This is shit. I don't like it." So, what's all that about? Don, you want to go first with that one, please? Well, that's just stuff happening. I mean, what? I mean, what's what? What's your question around that? What's remarkable about that? What's the what's underlying it? Like, because what? Like, it's it's meaningful in some way, or what do you mean? I guess. I guess is. I'm not sure what the question. The question is why does pain and the ass stuff happen when you maybe think you don't deserve it, other other people don't deserve it? Um, why does some stuff happen to some people, doesn't happen to other people? What's the point? What's the point of pain? I guess what's the point of pain? But non-duality doesn't answer that question. I mean, it it it, it doesn't, and like. Or the question, you know, of theodicy, the question of evil or any of that, because non because love, unconditional love embraces all of that and everything's just arising. So, you know, there is no sense of all oh, the, the only the only way you can even approach a question like that is psychologically. You can't from a non-dual perspective, it's it's just unanswerable. It's you you know. You can go into your psychology and go, why, well, why am I attracting these kind of patterns? And, you know, it's not fair. But but beyond that, it's just seen in its kind of innocence. And, you know, it's beyond all that. It's, you know, there's there's no one suffering. There's, you know, that's it's another story arising in a sense. But that sounds totally cold, totally indifferent. But it's it's not like from from that perspective. So it, it doesn't answer those individual questions, if you like, you know, because they're very, they're very human questions, aren't they? Fairness, you know, um, uh, you know, what's, what's right, what's wrong, what's evil, what's, you know, cause this is beyond, this is beyond the mind. It's beyond those questions. It's beyond, um, you know, and 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 they are. It is unanswerable as well. In, in in a real sense, I think you can kind of grasp. Like we can conjecture, and we have certain maps, don't we? For you know, come approaching something like that, even psychologically. I mean, you know, the only thing. So, so if you experience something in your life, Dawn, that causes that makes you think that's painful, uh -huh. do you do you you engage with that in a psychological level then? there's no other level of engaging with it because I mean engaging is that isn't it because but do you feel do you feel like annoyed by it or frustrated by it or oh yeah I mean it's appropriate or something something hits you smack mm -hmm. in the face it feels unfair of course it that that's there's a you know like you can you can put it in a way you know there's a, the unfairness part of the brain that, that you know is very very strong there's real strong reactions to the unfairness in the brain you know put it that way but like and it's natural awake or not awake that there's a reaction to that like sometimes life just sucks and it's it seems like more than we can bear but it's 
no one doing that and no one experiencing that but you know you can explore it on a psychological level and you, you know but yeah there's non-duality is the wrong place to go you know to a non-duality meeting to, like in a sense of it you know if we're just talking pure non-duality it's um you know it's all love but that doesn't that does not help I mean it doesn't help like doesn't mean it's okay on an individual level there's still like a sense of injustice a sense of what's what is is wrong and right I mean that's just the individual that's the the ego we we have that that's our our way of navigating life like where does the word love come from why are you calling it love? Because, because it embraces everything, because it's, it has a feeling tongue to it as well. It is love, it's seen as love, it's experienced as love, it's... But who's, but who's defining that? Who's defining love? What's defining love? Why is that word being used? Because that feels like a, that's a human word. It's a dictionary, it's a dictionary definition. It is, it is a human word in, 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 sense, in a sense we can, we have some sort of sense of that, like, um, like, you know, the love itself can, because it's boundaryless and, and, you know, you think of falling in love that, you know, there's a kind of merging, there's kind of, you know, um, the, the boundary is, it's like looking in a mirror, right? It's, the separations can seem to evaporate in that to a certain extent, right? Well, it's, and there's a coming home in the other, like that, a feeling of that, maybe some sort of sense of that. So this is a, because, because there's no separation, like you, you think of that, it's the otherness, isn't it? That creates um, that unease. So peace is, well, it's, it, you know, you could say intimacy, um, you know, like, like in moments where the mind isn't there, where you, you see um, a sun, you know, maybe you're, in, you're on holiday, you see a beautiful sunset, and for a moment the mind isn't there, and it's just peace, and there's just love, and there's a feeling of fulfillment, but maybe the mind comes back, but there are moments, we all experience moments of this, you, you know. Yeah, I think part of the struggle is, trying to describe something that you cannot describe by using description uh, <laughs> it, seems, it seems sort of contradictory. But I get it. I mean, I know what you mean. I, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, unfortunately, it just doesn't. Yeah. You know, it is. Yeah, I mean, Jung describes it as a secret. You know, non-duality is a secret because, not because... You tell no one, but because no one can understand it, it's not understood by anyone, right? It's understood, bypasses the mind. So it's in, in that sense. So, yeah, but yeah, you, you know, they're natural questions, but there's a lot of, um, I think a, a lot of, there's a lot of re a realization that a lot of questions just can't be answered. Um, so there's less struggle with that like no one has those answers and as, you know, as far as we know like there there isn't it's just you know a sense of unfairness arises it's I don't know what do you think Walter yeah well what, what I think um is that without any thoughts or concepts, you know, just sitting here, it's just like a breeze on my back. It's just the sounds I'm hearing and my own voice. It's just what is. And, <clears throat> you know, meaningless thoughts about a meaningless world. So when you say, basically you're asking like why to, bad things happen to good people. <laughs> and, you know, there really aren't any bad things and there really aren't any good people. These are all beliefs and concepts and, um, and we're assigning meaning and purpose. Um, so 
but this beingness if it's experienced by the person as peace and love um and and i i don't know what else to say it's just um if you could sit with that like without any thoughts or concepts or beliefs it's just this uh, non-conceptual pure beingness that without good bad just or is. words or words like good bad or <laughs> words yeah. or words i was gonna say I, I think jung tries to capture that when he in his interpretation of the book of job you know job is is punished by um, but if by God, there's a wager with the devil, you know, Satan, that Job is nice to God, very, very loyal, only because he's got so much wealth and power. Um, but actually, in the end, God decides to become man in Christ, according to Jung, because man is an ethical being. Man has to be aware of the fact that he's mortal. Man is going to die. His actions have consequences. So he has to navigate life through an ethical kind of way to make things work out. So God being the formless, you know, thundering, indifferent in the Old Testament, God, um, you know, there's good, bad, there's everything. And, and, and man being kind of form, you know, bringing in all these different aspects of the human being, kind of ethical human being. So um i suppose that's a kind of metaphor for shakti shiva or you know what we can't you know these questions have baffled theologians for for ages the odyssey the question of evil the you know and it's we haven't got anywhere with it so like um We have a question in the chat for Don. It says, Don, how to live in this world as an apparently free person when seemingly all those around you are living by group think? Um, well, you probably need to group think. I mean, you're not saying very much there. Um, that will be very frustrating and probably very isolating and you should make some new friends, <laughs> maybe <laughs> meet some new people. Or, um, it can be crazy making that, but I mean, group think, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with awakening or, or not. I mean, I'm not sure what you're referring to there, but people who don't think for themselves, maybe um, not questioning the handed hand-me-down kind of ideas, the prescribed uh, ways of thinking. Um, it can make you doubt yourself, probably. Um, you know, you, you could get scapegoated in that. You'll, yeah, it's 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 not it's not a great environment by the sound of it. But why are you surrounded by that? That's my question. Why have you, you know, have you just recently woken up and you know has this become a problem recently, or is this a pattern, or I don't know. Um, yeah, no, it probably feels safe for a lot of people. They just, these questions don't arise for a lot of people. You know, if you're not, you don't have a sort of philosophical mind or, you know, in, in a way it's a curse to kind of question life that those whole, because a lot of people just bumble along and they don't think, well, why am I, you know, why am I, you know, the existential questions uh, like King Lear is surely there's more to life than this. I don't know, puts it probably a better way than that. But, um, you know, what is this? And, you know, search for meaning in it. What's it about? Is this all? Like, a lot of people, those questions don't really get them. Um, so it's interesting that they've got you and, 
I don't know, maybe you don't have an outlet for whatever it is you have. I don't know who you are, what you've got or where you're heading, but, I, you know. I don't. Um, yeah, it's me that wrote the question. Uh -huh. uh, just signed up to the, the Zoom call. Um, yeah, some of the things you say are definitely accurate, you know, about um, potential to be scapegoated. And yeah, I often, it's a pattern for sure. And awakening is something that's kind of dawned over the last few years. Right. And I'm not, it, it's difficult to say whether it's always been there and, and, you know, I just have kind of ignored it. I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I often find myself, sorry, I often go find, on. I mean, I've, sorry. No, go on, go on. You've often find yourself. Yeah, like you said, like just in environments where I don't fit in, you know, just constantly. But it's a constant pattern from childhood. Um, yeah, and it, it's um, it's crazy, yeah. really. But it seems like something I just can't can't break out of. It just, yeah, it really seems like I just can't break out of it. Like I just see, oh, wherever I would turn, the same pattern would 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 again kind of happen. Um, okay. And no that's one the will way like it feels. So people shut you down. Then do they? How does it manifest with the others? You say groupthink. I mean, what do you mean by that then? What, what kind it's of... difficult, difficult to say what I mean by it. Um, by groupthink, yeah, like you put it better in terms of people living by the sort of hand-me-down ideas. Or I, I can't, I couldn't really put it in any way, but I will just always feel like there's a group and then there's me outside. And, of course, um, that, that might, um, everybody might have that experience, but I, I've, I really don't feel um, that that's the case. I, I totally think... Um, yeah, I, I just feel isolated, really, you know, and always on my way out of whatever environment I might be in. I'm always passing through and looking to leave and looking to go to a new environment. But the same thing kind of keeps happening, keeps happening, keeps happening. Um, so as a, ki as a kid, did no one hear you or see you? Like you weren't... Yeah, for sure. No doubt. Yeah, I got scapegoated real bad as a child. Like, Were you the scapegoat? Like, real... Yeah, yeah, real bad. And I've, I've, I know you've mentioned Dr. Ramani um in some of your i think before and i've watched a lot of videos on that and for years really uh -huh. um and i you know I've, i know that the answer is to find one's true expression and things like that and i think i've got it but it's real tentative you know baby steps and i think you just you keep going back to that safety that kind of oh that's that's what you know is that kind of scapegoating or you're comfortable in that role and it, do, you, just, do you it just accept keeps that role? manifesting it I think um, I think I've got a lot better in the sense, but it, it's it's always creeping on me. I always feel like it, that role is going to get creeping up. It's creeping up on me, you know. And I, I don't really want to be that, that like that at all. But I don't see how I could exist exist in these environments without being playing that role. So, oh, you, um, well, you know, like if if you if you come out of that, like. I mean, scapegoat children, like if, you, if you've had that, I mean, they're often very much the most interesting ones. Like, you've, you, you know, you'll, you know, if you do kind of work with that and, and see where that's coming from and kind of, you can go a long way. Scapegoat, you know, scapegoat types are very interesting. They see through stuff because they know, they, they know the dark side of life. They're, they're really in touch with the mm. shadow because they've been the target of that. Like it's, it's an amazing insight. So there's there's a lot there if you're kind of potentially a lot there. I think if and, and it's definitely worth exploring because you don't you don't have to take that um, role on. You really don't. I mean, you can work that out maybe in a psychotherapy group or something. You know, that's one way of working it out. But um, when I was when I was using um, the example of Job, he was seen by Rene Girard as a field scapegoat because his he the beggars in the street saw him as condemned by god he must be evil everyone he was the scapegoat scapegoat and he did not take it on his best friends came to him and said you've done wrong because everybody's against you he said no um my god is my defender my defender lives um mm. i'm just giving a biblical example but like you don't have to I, I know if, if that's your group of friends, maybe you feel you're very dependent on them. So I can see where, you know, you can get trapped. No, in that. it's more, it's, 
it's as as in friendship groups like i've really got only like one or two real close friends and then i'm kind of not in any friendship groups it's more um work situations you know i'm always the outsider but um uh, yeah but i uh, yeah i mean i sorry you're probably in the wrong work for a start you probably oh, yeah i'm definitely in the wrong work like jesus christ yeah I've, I've, i was talking about i think a few weeks ago i talked to I sent a message, you know, on the YouTube chat saying, you know, working in schools, a school teacher, quite traumatised children and traumatised areas, you know, stress and people running around the building and, you know, like madness and professionals kind of out at sea, you know, just, they're just drowning <laughs> in the workloads well, and all things like that. And it's just a tough environment to be in. But I mean... You're probably good at what you do. Am I guessing right, you know... Are you good at I'm that? I'm good at what I do. Yeah, it's hard to say. I'm not even sure. Like, I, I can't, I'm not necessarily, well, I must be doing okay, but uh, I, I, mm, it's difficult to say. I mean, you I always to... feel, I, I want to get out of it. Like, I always want to, you know, I wouldn't mind if I never saw any of those people again. But I, I, I've always been working, like, for a company, so I go into different schools and I sort of take on different roles for six months here, six months there, three months here, 12 months you know, so that suits me in the sense that I can sort of pass through the school. I'm not sure if I'm good at what I do. I mean, oh, it's an impossible job, isn't it, teaching? <laughs> yeah. Are, are you are you a truth teller as well? Was that your role? Did you did you say things? Yeah, I was. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't speak up like and be a truth teller. But it's impossible, kind of, not to, because your attitude, your kind of who you are. That's just kind of who you are just the way you walk you know and the way you are and you can't help but be what you are and you don't have to speak up and um yeah I do t I mean I tell this about myself I it's about others but uh well you're threatening yeah, something you oh know. yeah there's no doubt yeah yeah and then I go I go and live in this Buddhist monastery as well like part time of the year and oh. I'm threatening things there like left right and centre you know like with everyone right, okay. yeah yeah and um, that's interesting, you know, getting avoided by people or ignored. Just the shit that goes down in communities like that, where it's a grapevine and all that. Um, well, I guess if you're awake, you're not making an identity or that, you know, because, you know, like, I think I did at one point make an identity of being the scapegoat, you know, like, oh, you know, like, yeah. you know, like mm. I guess if you're awake, you're probably not doing that right. I think I used to, yeah, and I, I do slip into that every now and then, like yeah, so being controversial. Um, yeah, it's hard to to wake up to to what you're doing. It's definitely worth exploring, though. Like I would, because you're probably in the wrong environment or something. Like you yeah. know, whatever it is, and where that's coming from as well. And if you're watching Doctor Ramani, no doubt there's, you know maybe narcissistic abuse around, around you you know you must be drawn to that for a reason right um yeah yeah there was a lot of that growing up you know um so yeah there's a lot of, a lot of abuse and yeah um stuff like that um yeah mm. interesting dynamics you know and all kinds of dynamics what to do your friends get you yeah. two close friends? I mean, um, my well, I say two, but there's really only one very close friend. Yeah, he gets me pretty good, like for, for real. Like, he's like, he's like my best friend, you know, soulmate kind of thing. Oh, okay. Um, so oh. I'm lucky there that I kind of found that. Um, and it's funny that you know it straight away. Um, right. Yeah. So I'm fortunate, blessed to have that. Um, yeah, I can't say anything more, really. But I mean, you, yeah, you're sort of looking for those true connections, people to, and it's so obvious, isn't it? It's so clear that the, the people that you feel light and free, and then you feel constricted and tight, and that's just, you want to get away from that. And that's kind of life sort of moves towards the freedom. Uh, yeah, well, you maybe, the, maybe you're not see, seeing something still, you know, psychologically, like, if it's following you, you know, I don't, you mm. know. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, you get, you could get, you can get anything though. You could get attacked in the street. You can get, 
the yeah. cashier can be rude, rude to you. It's so dicey, you know, the world. It feels feel so kind of, you got un unsafe in many ways. Uh, okay. That's not, mm. That sounds painful. And it sounds, it sounds yeah, so pretty. necessary. Like, I mean, I don't know you, but it sounds like it could be other, like you're, you know, you're awake now and, you know, I, I've been there. So I, I know, I kind of know where you, I feel like I know where you're coming from, but it can be other, like, I don't know. Yeah, guess... what, not, no, not unsafe. No, yeah, so, yeah safe. I mean, I'm, but I've got kind of a, a little, nest you know where i can kind of retreat to home space i've not sort of made that for myself and um yeah i know what you mean there is that there is there is those uh that potential for freedom but it is trauma it's so trauma based it's so deeply rooted in the body and, uh, yeah you know, it's a shame you've got the addiction oh, okay this. I do quite a lot, quite a lot of stretching, and that's that's so helpful. Stretching out the muscles, long periods, hours at a time, because so okay. much tension right. held, held held in the body, and that's definitely okay. helpful. Right. Out. So it's oh. it's sort of a, yeah, long waking up process. It's uh, it's. Uh, oh, so yeah. there's a lot of release of trauma and stuff as well. Then that's going on. loads. Yeah, yeah, loads. Like right, body body stuff. Yeah, right. A lot of, yeah a lot of like crazy amounts like i used to be in pain like constantly and oh whoa really, okay really, yeah released quite a lot of that but, right yeah chronic stuff quite... you know just the way the nervous system was held it was so tight uh mm -hmm. the body and it must have shown in your in your face and your voice everything uh so I mean, yeah, I feel like I'm on a good path. Like I feel like I'm going somewhere good, you know, in, in the deep, the deep part of me, the deepest part. Um, but then, but then, yeah, there's this, there is a lot of, still a lot of unsafety feeling, you know, feeling with people, paranoia, you know, and oh, whether okay. it's accurate. Yeah, things like that, paranoia about <laughs> colleagues. And, sorts of things yeah which i mean which can be created by occupying that position as well i mean it doesn't mean you're necessarily paranoid but does your does your friend give you kind yeah. of like good feedback like a reality check and stuff like that do you uh yeah he's not bad i think it's more it's just a breath of fresh air and it's not it's not so much that he can sort of mirror back things um we sort of are just comfortable just of in every way like fighting and joking around and it's hard to he I think he mirrors me pretty good uh you know I think he knows me pretty well he's got holds, holds me in positive like regard it's mm. I can't, can't say yeah because you need it's quite good to get you know to be seen and to have you know a real accurate response to what you're saying and someone who sees all that and just to kind of you know to to begin to see what's going on like because it's it's if you try to do it by yourself it's I don't know I, I think it's I'm not saying it's impossible but it'd be a lot slower if you do it like but mm. you know yeah yeah I, I, I suppose you could point into therapy but it's diff it's difficult to find um Good, no, not a good therapist, not the right word for it, but the right therapist. Uh, difficult. Well, good, really. good therapist or confidant, but someone who gets where you're coming from and reflects that back and gives you, you know, so that your sense of, so that you know what's going, you know, like you, you can really explore what's going on and they can share their stuff as well. Like, mm. I mean, it, with friendship, at least it's a two way, it's just good. Therapy is great as well if you get someone who, who gets a narcissistic mm. abuse stuff. But, uh, mm. uh, well. Yeah, I tend to be not very trusting. Like, uh, you know, you, you can meet people, can't you? And, and you can sense that there's that sort of attraction. And I tend to push that away or run away, um, you know, because I'm worried that I don't know what it is that I'm sort of fearful that um, 
I don't know, I just more safer, you know, in my sort of the world that I know. And yeah, so that sort of thing can happen, you know, when somebody can come across someone, you can tell that they want to get to know you or they see something that they find attractive about you. And, and I sort of push that away. It's pretty crazy, really. Oh, no. OK. Well, you, I mean, the, the, the ones scapegoat types are, I think, primarily freeze and fawn responders in the trauma kind of model Pete Walkers. But so you probably. Yeah, that sounds them. accurate. So you withdraw when you're stressed out and when someone's mm -hmm. scapegoating you, you're probably very nice to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Even though I'm yeah, smoking in the face. Yeah. Survival. Oh, it's just survival. And... It is survival. I suppose it works in a way, but and you just want to engage, engage as little as possible with them. But yeah, there's some cunts around. Uh, you can, you can <laughs> change it. Yeah, I know, but you can... I, I you know I'm sure you can change that around it's, it's definitely yeah if you want to you, a lot of that stuff can fall away you just probably need a wee bit of a you know I don't know help you know help whatever just to see what you've got to see who you are and to know what's all there because like you know you know yourself it's all there everything you need you've got you know uh-huh there's probably a lot of self-doubt though. <laughs> yeah, this so self-doubt creeps in, yeah, into the heart. Um, yeah. 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 It's a killer. <laughs> it's not great. Pro probably, yeah, yeah. But then you might say, "Oh, it's your discerning wisdom," because part of me thinks, "Oh, it's that," you know, discerning wisdom. No, maybe. I mean, mm. difficult one, but uh, yeah. Well, these meetings are good and yeah it's good to you know be with uh people who are sort of on a on a good level you know just through calls like this through the internet it's amazing you know so yeah. yeah thanks for doing this and walter it's good yeah um yeah i might give you yeah i might give you ideas a, a pop you know maybe you might what but give your ideas a pop you know getting a therapist or I don't know. It's so looking at things. I'm one. There's one here. <laughs> you are indeed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, I know you've. I've got your website. Um, so I probably could spend send a message. I, I didn't think you were looking for. The website clients, says though. stuff off on it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, your website says you're not looking for Just ignore clients. That. Okay. Well, I you, you want to give out your email, email there, uh, Don? It's right. Well, he can do it through the website if he wants. Oh, well, your email. Yeah, yeah, on yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Just ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you yeah, are yeah I'll send clients. you an email. <laughs> okay, great. In a, in some cases, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll give you an email then. All right. Okay. All right. See you. Or not. Or not. It depends. Or not. Oh yeah, you know. Happens, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. See what yeah. you feel like. Thanks. Uh, it's good chat. <laughs> anyway, cheers, guys. See ya. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Walter, I just wanted to respond for a second to Rob because uh, I spent 40 years in an educational bureaucracy and retired about seven years ago and was never so happy in my whole life because, damn, if you move one inch to either side outside of the stringent uh, parameters they set up for you, you are ostracized, you are uh, blacklisted, you know, they then they watch you and watch you and watch you. And it's very, very, very stressful. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, taking courses at night and stuff, I was finally able to like find myself into an office, <laughs> which was a lot nicer than being within the school system. It's it's a lot of stress for somebody. And, uh, you know, I, I can uh, commiserate with Rob and I hope he makes it, I, you know, uh, yeah, it's rough. Bureaucracy. Ooh, school systems, the worst. Those poor kids. <laughs> We're screwing them all up. That's why the country is the way it is. Your country, my country, whatever. Thank you. God, even the word bureaucracy, you know, you just hear the tread of the Nazi boot, do you? <laughs> just, I don't know. So.
Well, we got over 20 people watching, so feel free to jump in with your questions. Daryl, you had a, a few earlier on the chat. I see you're in the Zoom if you want to jump in. Or not. Hello. How are you today? Hi, Danny. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yeah, how are you? If uh, the other guy, Daryl, wants to come in, he can come in. I didn't mean to cut him off, but I just got the, the urge. Uh, oh, anyway, well, it's good to, uh, I like hearing you guys, and I've been listening to the introductions, Dawn. They've been great the last, somebody said in the beginning, they were great uh, introductions. Uh, but, um I don't, yeah, I don't really have a lot of questions. I feel nervous all of a sudden here. Um, but uh, all right, I guess well, one thing is like about like there's nothing that can be done about anything, right? Because there's nobody here. But yet, if I'm not, if the me hasn't dropped, the apparent me hasn't dropped, it feels like there's someone here. You know, so, um, I mean, maybe how do you guys think about that? How do you deal with, they're not, you know, it's like, how can I give anybody advice or yet we do, but who, like, you know, there's no prescription in anything. So that's, I'm just kind of making a general thing. Like you can't, like, everybody's going to go through what they're going to go through. Like whether it's alcoholism, which happened here, it stops when it stops. But when you're in it, if you say that or think that way, it's awful because you need some hope, you know? But anyway, uh, I think it's probably just ends up playing out as it plays out because when I was ready, I got help. I really, I really went for getting help, you know, because you're desperate and you want out. <clears throat> but uh, but really, that's just the way it played out. I mean, right? So, well, hey, they talk about uh, grace, you know, grace of God. And yeah. most people I know were struck sober, and they say uh, by the grace of God, and grace is like um, an unmerited gift. So you don't have to earn it. You can't screw it up. It's just something that seems to be given for no reason at all, no meaning or purpose, whether you get sober or you don't get sober. And you're right that there is no one doing anything, but things are being done. Things seem to be being done. So the way I look at it is, say Don suggests, you know, therapy or something, and that's followed up on, and the person does that, and they, they feel better, and they, that's all just what seems to be happening, you know? But so to say there's nothing to do is not actually the message. It's just there's no one to do it. There's, there's no separate individual with autonomy doing anything. But going to meetings, getting a sponsor, reading the big book, um, staying sober one day at a time, whatever, whatever you want to say, um, are things that apparently are being done. And there's an apparent person that's sober. You know, and th that's why I say it's a story, because there you go. There's a character in a story staying sober one day at a time through right. whatever methods or means. But, yeah, I think to say there's nothing to do is is – is not really the message because there's, there's right. plenty and to be done. Well, it's also very, what do you call it? Disempowering or it's very uh, like, it just sets the, any sales that you have, the wind just goes out of them. You're, you're like, I can't do this. I can't do that. It, you know, it can be, it's, I don't know. 
used in the mind, I guess them, I've used the message of non-duality in my mind, I think, to, uh, I don't know, to try to, uh, like, if since there is no one here, really, then use that, you know, in some way, but um, like use the knowledge of the fact that there's no one here. Yet my experience is, except for 25 years ago, I had a, I did have an experience where that was all gone. But uh, now it's, you know, this apparent me is back. So it, it seems like it's, you know, but it knows that this message is true. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of mental uh, stuff that happens. But uh, yeah, anyway, no, it's all good. I mean, I just, I'm not at my best right now because I'm a little high. So sorry, but uh, um, you know, uh, I just kind of wanted to say hi. That's really it. You keep, know, I, I think you know, keep listening. I enjoy listening to you, Don. Both, you know, like because I was in the, the non-duality camp where I'm only listening, listening to the non-compromising message. You know, started with Tony, and then there's a lot more people now, like Kenneth and and Jim, and I resonate with what they say. You know, I resonate. Yet it's um, not my experience. You know, like the me is still apparently here, and uh, but and then. I've been running into the fear of the message has been, I've been getting a little bit of a, afraid of the message because, Oh, I'm not suffering that much anymore. I don't drink three years. Things are okay. Do I really want to die? <laughs> no, of course. No, man. No. So there's a little bit of that that's coming up. It's like, all right, we can put the brakes on here, you know? So, I mean, anyway, I do believe nothing I can do about it. I heard that a long time ago. Thank you. No more searching. Nothing I can do about it, about, about the me dropping, you know. But I can do, maybe I can do something about the dream, you know, do something about uh, what's apparently happening, right? And if it does, if you, I can at least try. If it doesn't work, it's okay. It's not a big deal, you know. That's what are we left for? Well, if we don't, if we're not, if we're still there, we know, though, we know what the truth, we know what's up, but we're still here. What are you left with? What do you do? Go ahead. Don. I guess it's happening anyway. Oh, yeah. sorry. Oh no, I was gonna just gonna say what he's basically said was you know like it doesn't it doesn't really factor in the norm like when when you've got a problem a personal problem you just approach it as you would ordinarily anyway like I mean that's you know which is what you've been saying but. Because the message can be, heard, can be heard as a kind of futility of that. Of course, there's no guarantees of success in anything. And but you know that psychologically anyway. You don't need non-duality to tell you that. I, I guess it's just because people hear it in that way, don't they? Sometimes, like, you know, I don't even, you know, like, yeah. Sometimes you're better <laughs> just forgetting about the non-duality when you're facing just something like just which I guess is what you're doing anyway, like no guarantees, yeah. but you know, I think it can come. It's a fascinating mess. The message is fascinating too. You know, it's like uh, that there's nobody here, you know? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, it's like, it goes over, you see people say that, but it just kind of like goes over the head, you know, like, because that's the, the, you know, the experience is somebody's here and you're in thoughts and life and all that, you know, that's like, the, that's, I guess, why awakening is such a big thing because it's like, whoa, you know, I'm not my thoughts, uh, you know, there's a, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, it's just a big, um, I kind of lost my track of thought there, so. But it's uh, too many edibles, you know. <laughs> well, I think the book, one addiction. I'm tempted to quote the book whenever I talk to someone that's sober, because it says, uh, "When we place ourselves in God's hands, it's better thing, uh, you know, better than anything we could have imagined for ourselves." Um, so I see it that we don't have to place ourselves in God's hands. We're already in God's hands.
it's already the case. You know, lack of power doesn't have to be our dilemma. <laughs> There's something about hearing that though too, isn't there? Like just the sense of permission of handing over, even though no one could do that. Like there, there is something in hearing it, I think that can kind of help. There's a kind of energetic something around that. Like, I think we all know that, like in a certain situation, you know, it's a cliche, but it can make something relax in us or, you know, anyway. <laughs> well thanks i mean it's good to you know to speak with you guys and i like when i'm on a month when if i'm off on mondays i try to tune in you know so it's good all right thank you danny thanks danny okay we got CCR, Queens Clearwater Revival says, you can tell yourself you're going to stop drinking, but it's going to happen or not, regardless of your thoughts or what you want. That's what the radical non-duality says with confusing language. I think you can see that anyway. I think that's kind of plays out in life, right? I mean, statistically, if you go to the 12 steps, some people make it, some people, yeah, I mean, I don't think you need non-duality to get that, really. Maybe for it to sink in, like, absolutely. Well, of course, I mean, there's, isn't it kind of obvious in a way? Like, you know, but then some people, I don't know, like, um, think there's a process and they will, continue with something and continue and continue and, you know, this um, malignant optimism, a term Sam Vaknin coined for like, not, not giving up something like this is going to happen eventually. This is going to work out the way I want it. And so there may be something and dropping that as well. Like, um, you know, there's an intelligence to knowing when to let go, but kind of <laughs> everything we say is a fault isn't it but you know you have to say something right it's real cliche and here and there yeah i mean the, like big book says god's the director we're his agents he's the uh you know he's in charge basically and there is no he, there is no God in my view, but it's just what is. So there's, there's no surrendering necessary. It's just already the case. It's already, you know, like the Bible says, lilies of the field, like everything's already being taken care of. Daryl, did you want to jump in? Yes. Okay, please. You want to turn on your camera? Am I okay? Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, sir. Okay, I'm trying to learn how to turn the damn camera on. Let's see. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, you get the little icon there. With the and what do you do? Video. You press there? Just boom. Just hit it. Probably has like an X through it. And then you can, you just turned off your mic now. That's all right. You do whatever you can do. I, okay, hang on. <laughs> okay, there. Am I there in that? No. no Hold on, there. I'll get it. I'm coming. <laughs> He's Am coming. Am I there now? Not yet. No? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I am technologically illiterate, Walter. Please know that. No problem. Just you could just go ahead and ask, say what you want to say. But now you get yourself muted again. Okay, hang on. Can you hear me now? I can totally hear you. Yeah, it should be just like okay. a little picture of a... I see uh, that, and I push the picture, but nothing's happening when I push it. All right. 
Well, so just anyway, go right ahead. Okay, so I just wanted to address um, a couple of things. It's so interesting hearing the different perspectives and uh, just a quick about me in terms of my awakening, if, and that's in quotation, because I don't know what that means. But about seven years ago, I had something happen to me which changed my whole perspective on everything. And ever since then, I was confused by that seven years ago. And as I sit here listening to you guys talk seven years later from from then, I'm I'm just as confused <laughs> as I was seven years ago about what has happened to me and what I am to do with it. Um, and I'm not really looking for any answers here. I just wanted to share this ongoing frustration that I'm having lately about feeling like a damn puppet in reality. Like, like I really have no power. I'm just here or something's just here. And like you said, this is just happening. Um, but I'm not, that doesn't sit well with me because I feel powerless in any regard with that way of thinking. If I'm just here and things are just happening, then what am I? Just a damn what? What 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 what, what is there to do if that's the case? I guess that that is a question. If I'm just here and this is just happening, is there anything, any action, anything that I should be doing other than what just happens? I guess that's a question. Uh, Don, you want to? <laughs> like life just goes on doing I mean doing something other than what just happens I mean obviously that doesn't make any sense right in a way but like I think I think the frustration just comes in taking the, the message sort of hearing the message rather than you know like there is nothing different in life like it it's experienced differently. There's no one living that, but life goes on in the normal way. And you do, you know, I want to do something, I go and do it. I go for a night out, I organize something. You're not impotent in this. You're not powerless in this. If Powerless exists in the relative as well, right? Um, that can be a psychological fact, right? I mean, this isn't about being powerless and in, in, it's about being open and vulnerable. It's, it's it's not powerless or not powerless. Like it's beyond all that. It's just, it's just seeing that there's no center to experience. There's no, you know, I, I'm not sure why you're struggling with that. So maybe you had a glimpse and the sense of constriction or something has returned and you're trying to figure it out somehow. Um, a mixture of hearing it with a mind and, and your own experience in the past or something because none of that exists for me I mean none of it it's like it's just normal living it really is there's no difference here it's just experienced differently and it's most you know so the mind isn't at the forefront you know the ego's not in the forefront so you're not busy trying to work things out to the same extent maybe you were so that's kind of you know that can be accessed but it's not who you are but it doesn't matter it makes no difference whether the mind's completely trashed completely gone forever or not like you'll the, there's no loss in this not really there's a you know the illusion is seen through it's not you know the rest of it's intact it's just without an identity and you know like I don't know how to put it or to make it sound like it's just not it's not powerlessness it's not and in fact you know because it's love I mean it's just yeah I don't know I mean I'm explaining it it's just like <laughs> all of that kind of falls away when this is an abiding state it all falls away really there's no struggle with those kind of concepts because they are and and because hearing the message it's the message can can leave you kind of feeling like what you're talking about like but you know this you've experienced it right you know so I don't know maybe you're struggling to embody that I don't know where you're at you don't know where you're at do you so I don't know 
Well, thanks. Hello. Are you going? Or are you? No, no, I'm here. Can you hear me? Well, well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We can yeah. Hear you. Okay. Is, have you any? I mean, did you have a glimpse that lasted a few weeks then, and it's back to kind of as it was, or? Well, when you say glimpse, I'm not sure what you mean by glimpse, but let, I, what happened was uh, six years ago, I, I got terminated from my job. Um, and I think that was the impetus that kind of, I start things just, I start seeing things differently. I think I was so, uh, I think I was, I was more, <laughs> so when I lost the job, huh? well, there went Daryl, you know, I had no real identity other than my work. So everything shifted from there. And then all, all, all of life seemed very, very different. It's like, I didn't, I didn't have a sense of who I was anymore and have a sense of, of anything. So over the last seven years, it's been that kind of thing going on. And, and after a while, it becomes very frustrating because I guess I'm looking for some some way to to be, I guess. And maybe I should not look for a way to be and just be and be okay with just being. I guess that's what I need to do because I, I'm looking for a way to be, I guess. Rather was, than just being. Right? Was the love scene? Was it just the seeing about you know, have you heard of like the seeing emptiness, seeing a fullness was was there a sense of intimacy there, a sense of unconditional love or, you know, like, did it? Uh, no. It? So what? maybe it was a scene of emptiness, was it? Like, just like the self gone and kind of not cold, but a kind of, um, you know, non-attached state with, you know, does that resonate or? No, no, I hear what you're saying. No, not that at all. I've never felt unattached. I guess I just wasn't sure. I thought I was attached to what I believe God was in my okay. bringing up as, as, in terms of Christianity. I thought that was the attachment. So all of that fell away. Okay. The religion, okay. the Christianity, all of that, and left me confused. Well, what the hell do, do I believe now? Since all of that obviously doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay. All right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, so more like that. Okay, so there's a part of you still struggling with it, but it's gone. It's just gone. But you, it, it, yeah. it's 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 gone, and I'm struggling with it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so maybe that's, it's not that's gone. <laughs> 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 well, it's good and and bad. I I don't know why you're still struggling with it, but maybe. Me you need to, but, um, okay, and you've watched a lot of non-duality stuff, so you know you, you're you're familiar with the meth, you know. You, you recognize what's happened to you. You said that, didn't you? Oh, absolutely. I've seen about a million non-duality videos and about a million um, near-death experiences. That's how it really start, started for me. I started, I was obsessed with watching those damn, uh, uh, not uh, the uh, the uh, life and death experience videos. I yeah. watched, and, and so, because they became so real, it's like, it's like what they were describing had happened to me, although I hadn't died. But I felt like I'd had that same experience. Um, you know, all of that that they said that, that, that people go through after they had their death near death experience, I feel like I've had that without dying, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Okay. Because awakening is very much part of well, not always the case. So the non, you know, I mean they are they can be separate things. Those, but I mean, an NDE's got nothing to do with non-duality in a sense, but a lot of people have. A permanent shift or, or through that you know that is part of that you know comes back it's an abiding state arises from that I'm putting that really badly I don't care anyway mm -hmm. oh so, yeah you don't I mean yeah but Andy yeah and the falling away of dogma the falling away of the idea of a god separate in some yeah. other realm uh, yeah yeah, because there were yeah, I was raised in the church. I've I, I've been a I was a Christian minister most of my life and a youth oh, wow, minister, okay. all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all of right, that. okay. Right. Well that makes it more profound, isn't it? There there yes. are some yeah, that 
yeah that's a difficult one I think for ministers and stuff I, I've seen a couple of interviews I think there's a couple on conscious TV not conscious TV um Bat Gap yes with, yes uh, yeah okay you've seen them yeah but it can make yeah and some people stick with the job don't they and and, and can be quite good at that but they can't they can't come out with this stuff you know I think Alan Watts I mean he was a wasn't he a priest or anyway he was clergy somehow or and he gave it up in the end because you know couldn't kind of stand by the dogma um yeah, it, it's very frustrating because, you know, of course, your family and your, everyone expects you to be the same person oh, and yeah. expect you to believe the same thing that you believed for 50 years of your life. And it's no longer there. You can't go back to to what's not there anymore. And so I guess oh, it's just frustrating. I, I, I just I, I'll, I'm always frustrated and, and I'm getting frustrated about being frustrated because I, life is short and I don't want to spend my life any part of it frustrated and and i'm not used to living a life in this type of frustration and i don't know what the hell to do about it that's what's frustrating <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like anyway, you're frustrated I, with the identity yes perhaps well but your, your new identity is not a puppet though <laughs> <laughs> say more say more say more about that well well what i mean is uh the identity just completely vanished as a, you know, you're obviously not what you do. You're not your roles, you know, like I'm a father, I'm a cook, I'm a this and that, but you know, those, that's not me. I'm just, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm reluctant to even say what I am because it's all just concepts, but the, identity as a separate self just vanished so yeah if you're struggling with the you know you're not a minister anymore you're not of this anymore you know and you're you know what i mean it's kind of like this free fall and i've heard of people being in that state it sounds like um the uh, uh dark night of the soul in a way it might be what you're going through mm. Well, I've certainly heard about that and, and seen many videos about the dark night of the soul. Perhaps that's what this is. I I, I don't know, but um, it is a frustrating place to be. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, it, every day it, it's a it's a different type of frustration. But um, but I don't know. I, I talking through it helps. Even you know th th this little exchange here, I feel I feel better just by by speaking it speaking about it so thank you thank you both for the for listening and and helping i appreciate that well come next week you can speak some more <laughs> okay <laughs> i will, I will. Go yeah on. yeah definitely yeah i would like to continue this next week for sure okay absolutely thank you daryl okay thank, thank you guys. thank thank you everyone for being here uh we're out of time so We'll do this next week, same time, same channel. And join me, uh, if you can, at 10 a.m. Eastern time with Jerry Katz will be on the show. Uh, and with that, Don, got yeah, any, uh, speaking engagements coming up? Um, next month, 12th of May at the Philadelphia Association of Hampstead. <laughs> That's a long way away, but yeah, next week, yeah, seven o'clock Eastern, uh, not East, uh, British time for me. So, um, yeah, see you. Some of you then, I hope. And uh, thanks for coming. <laughs>